A few minutes ago, I got the signal from the young man asking me if I wanted two or three minutes, and I said, no, no, just, just a minute, because I didn't realize everybody was going to get three minutes, so I'll take my three minutes if you don't mind. <laughs> Somebody once said that high school never ends, and to me, it seems to be happening all over again. In high school, I was never the smartest, I was never the tallest, I was never the best looking one. But I learned one thing, you have to stand up and do your best. I am not a politician. I don't have all the answers, but I do know that the involvement that is shown here, with everyone here, with the turnout at the last election in November, and the 22 candidates running for four offices, we're starting to get involved, and that can only be good. I have a lot of things in common with you, even though some of you already know I come from another camp. And I thank you for your friendliness and your warmth and the respect that you show me. I know that many of you can say, we know about you, please get out. But because you don't, and because you have a good heart, and because I know the basics is we have good faith intentions to make this a good city. We all want to do it our way. God and the voters will decide which is the best way. But that's why I'm here. Because I have to make a contribution. Otherwise, I feel I'm not playing. To be complaining and not be part of the game would be a bad, bad faith move. So I have to throw in my hat, see what I can do to contribute, and let God sort things out. Now, what are my three things? As you know from my little flyers, many of you might know, taxes, as many of you have already managed uh, to, to explain even better than me, the bankruptcy possibility, the, I call it the financial tsunami that is coming our way across our nation, with pensions, with the way the city is growing. There is a challenge way, way beyond, I think, what we can even see in front of us. And it's only through fiscal conservatism, which is a lot of things we've said today, efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. I like to think of a test that on anything that we spend money on, it should pass the legal, is it legal? Is it necessary? What is the cost benefit analysis? What are the consequences? What is plan B? What is the guarantee? What are, how does it affect every facet? Is everyone involved in the discussion? Those are the things that that I'm gonna focus on. They already exist, but we want more details. We want more information. We want more involvement. We wanna know exactly what are we getting for each dollar that you spend from our money, with all due respect. And by the way, Mr. Eddie Olguin, uh, I like the way he votes uh, on fiscal issues, so I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> and uh, the other gentleman, Mr. Robinson, if you wanna know how I'll vote, you looked at Carl Robinson's record, most of my votes are gonna be like his. Oops. Mr. Perez, I'm glad to see you here. You <laughs> might, might not be associated with me, but uh, at one time, I know we, we're still friends. And he also has a fiscal conservative outlook that I agree with. Many of you heard him speak. He's much more eloquent and intelligent than I am. But I agree with him, his view on fiscal conservatism. The last thing I'll say is this. Why can't we get on the internet, get on the website for the city with just a couple of clicks and know exactly what are you working on? How much is it going to cost? What does it mean to my monthly tax bill? Is that asking too much? I don't think so. So those are the things that I hope to work on and work for. I thank you very much. I'm very happy <coughs> to all get involved. It's going to be an exciting May. God bless you. <coughs> <laughs> Mr. Hinojosa, you're speaking to a partisan organization that is democratic. Gay, the advancement of gay rights is part of our national platform. You're you have been... Be a different question, by you, well, no, it's the same question, just formulated a little bit more specifically for your very specific public comments. <coughs> and I know with being a strong conservative, the party of personal responsibility, you all stand behind stuff like that. So my question to you is, why should Democrats support you if you are very publicly against an issue that is part of our core values as a party. Amen. Well, you know, I, again, this is, this is the hot seat, okay? This is the hot seat. But let me explain to you this way. I think we, first of all, need to look at the rights that already exist. We live in a country where we already have guaranteed rights beyond any other country. The Bill of Rights are very clear. No matter what people's orientation or lifestyle is, you're guaranteed, we're guaranteed rights that are beyond most if not all countries. That's number one. So to now visit an issue, say for example, the marriage issue, to go to an institution, a sacrament, by your own admission, uh, Jaime, who goes to church three times a week, by the way, it is a sacrament that the church has, has set for years and centuries. 
And for us to want to redefine that sacrament to now make it equal and or uh, offer benefits to something that is not under that definition of a sacrament is goes against the majority of all Paswins, that's all. Yes. Uh, what's your view on um, separation of state and church? <clears throat> I, I do believe in the separation of church and state. But uh, like I told somebody else, if you can tell me how to leave God at home, to me leaving God completely at home is to leave my breath at home. I mean, God is in everything of what we do and think. The, def the true definition of God is the life giver. So in that sense, I can't leave God at home, but I will leave religion at home. I've got a follow-up question based on that. Um, you answered your, the question I asked you predicated on a biblical definition of marriage. She asked you what your position was in terms of the separation of church and state. So how do you marry the two? No pun intended. Well, well first of all, I, I did not just give you the biblical definition. I you said sacrament. You, I give you a sacrament established by the Catholic Church of which El Paso is 80% Catholic. So if we're going to obey our constituency, we'd have to obey that. Yeah. Third question, same thing. The, um, the, the bill was not about marriage. The bill was about insurance. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, and, yes, it may be 80 um, Catholic, but um, if you look at religions of the people who vote, no. Well, uh, I, I just have to rely on what happened in November. Whether you agree with me or not, and I don't agree with your thoughts, <coughs> in November, that issue was decided for us. No, uh, well, I happen to have voted in I had no idea what the question was. And I am reasonably well educated, and I can read. I had no idea what the question was. Well, the guy that the, the, uh, the overseer at the voter place had no idea what the question was. Well, the good it thing was a very poorly worded question, and that was the problem. You know, the interesting thing about the wording is, if you would look uh, at the, and please, Mr. O'Gain, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but page 31, page 30 or 31 on the uh, health plan of the city itself identifies uh, employees in such a way that nobody would be excluded. So it's kind of an interesting uh, straw man argument, I think. I understand, but it had to do with who gets the benefits. Do you have any questions? Yes. Are you associated by any choice whatsoever by uh, with Tom Brown? Associated? He's a friend of mine. Can you hear your definition of the law? According to the Bill of Rights. Exactly what? the way the Bill of Rights reads. Out of the Jews. Well, you want me to read all ten Bill of Rights to you? Yes, that you know, I, I, ten, I, I have a call all, all the Bill of Rights the way you interpret it. Okay. Because the way the way people uh, that you associate with interpret the Bill of Rights and equality what? in a different way. Yeah. Uh, I carry a copy of the Constitution in my car. I don't think this is the time for me to go to my car, come back, and read to you the Bill of Rights. Anybody can read them. I interpret it the way most America reads it, the way the federal government reads it, the way the state level, and the way the state defines it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a question. No, sorry. Yes, sir. The doctor, no, and I want more time. <laughs> That's not a question, point of order. <laughs> uh, point of personal privilege. Yes, sir. I just wanted to acknowledge um, the fact that we're growing so much. You can see that every meeting we have more and more people, and we're now getting Republicans showing up in the meeting. So I wanted to acknowledge a few of them. Obviously, um, uh, the speaker that just spoke right now, we also have, um, where was the other one at? <laughs> There's another one. Oh, Ben Mendoza, former, uh, former independent candidate for Congress a couple years ago. And of course, my tocayo. <laughs> Jaime, so welcome to uh, welcome back to the fold. Jaime, <laughs> I mean, would you become a Republican? <laughs> okay, real quick, um, we're gonna go back to announcements.